so the first quarter was down. You kind of see a pattern here. We do second quarter, third quarter, and then we see a first quarter dip again. When I look at these, what I see is I see kind of an ongoing 2% GDP. And I want to develop this a little bit because what I'm thinking about when I say that is I'm thinking about the GDP relative to other economies. If everyone grows at 2%, then really it's a, it's a battle between different companies who can, who can sell the most widgets and services, right? If, if, if the US economy grows at a faster rate, then US companies have a generally better chance of growing at a faster rate, right? They have more people buying from them here domestically uh, and they can grow at a faster rate. So when I'm looking at this from a global macro standpoint, I'm thinking about how US is gonna fare in the next decade in terms of growth. So there's two parts of GDP. The first part is population growth or labor growth. The second part is productivity growth. And so if you have high labor, labor force growth, you can have a high GDP just because more people are working. More money coming to their pockets, more spending the economy, that cycle works. If, if you have you know, low, uh, population growth, but you have high productivity growth. Think of the late 90s, you know, computers and chips and internet, and we started doing lots of things here, and lot of, lots of productivity growth. Then you don't need population growth, you have a lot of GDP growth. The challenge the US faces is we have, we're now operating at a productivity growth of about 1%, which is very low historically. And the last decade, we had about 1% of um, population growth. And next decade, given the retiring of the boomy, baby boomers, we're gonna have less than that for 10 more years. So it looks like, when you look forward to GDP, US GDP is gonna be 2%, maybe a little less than 2%. So that's a challenge um, for us domestically and for domestic companies, which is why you'll see later, you see so many US companies selling things uh, overseas a lot more. So here's, here's what we're gonna chalk up slow growth to currently. I think there's a, there's a challenge going forward, but here's some slow growth things that are happening right now. Low oil prices. We talked about this in our forecast report in January. Uh, oil, came, oil comes down, what happens? And in, in the first quarter, nice flies, uh, in the first quarter of this year, S&P earnings were, were off about 5%, 5.6%, I think, relative to last year. If you take energy out, S&P earnings were up 8.5%. Energy was a huge hit on S&P earnings in the first quarter. Why? We quit investing. We, we shuttered a whole bunch of projects um, in, the, in North Dakota. Uh, we laid off a whole bunch of workers. We, we did a lot of things there to, because we, we couldn't produce. We didn't, we didn't want to sell the oil cheaper than we pulled out of the ground, so we stopped pulling out of the ground. Okay? So oil, oil, low oil prices are important. But slower consumer spending. Usually you'd think, you know, we get low oil prices, we get a little bit more money in our pocket, maybe we, maybe we spend some more in a restaurant, maybe people buy a different car, maybe people spend, and they, they haven't really spent it. They've sort of just begun spending it a little bit. Whereas in the UK, they got the low oil prices and they're spending it like, they're spending all of it. So we're saving it, not really investing it, that doesn't show up, but we're putting it in bank accounts and we're saving it at, at no return. US dollar gains. So the US dollar went up so you guys understand how that works, right? The US dollar goes up in, up in price, up in value, and then if anyone wants to buy US goods, right, they have to transition their currency into dollars to buy those goods. So it's more expensive per unit of their currency to buy our co corporation's exports. So it's more difficult for our corporations to be competitive internationally when the dollar goes up. So when we start raising rates, that's going to be attract, make the dollar even more attractive on the global scale, make the dollar go up even more, unless it shot up in anticipation of that, which we don't really know. But it went up 20% in the first quarter, and what we're seeing now in, in, um, in profit reports is guess what? They're complaining about the strong dollar. All the corporations are basically complaining about the fact that the dollar's strong and they can't compete with a strong dollar. Interesting. That's why we have that, decline in exports. Strong dollar, decline in exports. And then we have slow wage growth. We're going to talk about that in a second. So at the same time, in places like Britain, Germany, we see GDP improving. In places like Spain and Italy, France, we're seeing it decline. Uh, all in, the estimation is that get, since from March, it hasn't really pulled through yet, but it's from March where Europe started doing their own QE. Remember what QE is, quantitative easing. They started buying bonds in their markets. Uh, we'll talk about that more as well soon. 
But by doing that, they've stimulated growth in the economy. And towards the latter half of this, of this quarter, we've started to see that in growth numbers. You don't really see it here yet, but the projections are improved. So Europe is going to grow faster, and this is why, right? Signs of economic recovery, euro lost value. Again, we talked about how our exports are more expensive. So when they buy a whole bunch of bonds, they print a bunch of money, um, their, their value of the euro goes down. So when we translate our currency, which is high, into their currency, which is low, we can buy more of their goods more cheaply than we can buy goods from our domestic companies. So when we can do that, their exports increase, so their companies are poised to grow more quickly than our companies simply because of the dollar exchange rate. 